So guys, I featured the Bismarck, so I might as well feature the Turpitz, her sister ship. So, Turpitz is actually have the same armor scheme as the Bismarck. I do not believe there's any exceptions. If there is, please tell me below and I will correct it as best I can. Running the same build as I explained in the Bismarck video. And uh, this is all the same reasons really, except uh, the Turpitz has the same mount secondaries as the Bismarck does, but the range is limited 7.3 for my Bismarck, uh, for my Turpit, sorry, and the Bismarck is 11.4. Though they are the, exactly the same secondary 6.6 .6 times 2, 150, 8 times 2, 105. Same with the Bismarck, 8 times 2, 105, 6 times 2, 150. Same should say secondary, the only difference is the firing range. So, Turpitz has that get closer than the Bismarck idea. You also have these special things right in the middle of the ship. Torpedoes. The original tier 7 torpedo boat for a battleship, you know. You've got 6 km, 64 knots, 14k damage-ish torpedoes on either side. You've got a set 4 on either side. So that's what makes this, uh, I would say, nearly the ultimate baller into, into the, until they introduce the Odin. The Odin is even tankier than the both of them, both these ships, and it has sonar and torpedoes because premium, I guess, I do not know. Um, no reason why these guns are ridiculously, this, this boat is borderline overpowered, but whatever, we're not going to go into that boat because I don't have really much explanation on it. <clears throat> now, Turpitz armor scheme and Bismarck armor scheme are the same, so I will go over the armor scheme real quick for you. Now, as you can see, Icebreaker bow, 60mm here. Most of it though is 32, so Yamato can have that bow for brekkies. Okay, same thing with the stern, except all of it's 32, and there's a little side bit there. That is not, that is, uh, what do you call it, 50. Now, take off this bow for briefly, and you can see the turtle back armor scheme arrangement. Now, citadels are guns, and this part here is citadel, okay? If I take this off and put it on, you can see this here. Citadel, turtle back armor scheme is when this armor here, casemate, I believe, yes, casemate, yeah, casemate armor, stuff that's attached to the citadel, is covering the citadel like the way it's right now. It's like cold, it's like covering it in some sort of like cloak, right, to veil there. See how that's that? So, what it's meant to do is see how it covers below the waterline here? Can see where the waterline is and it covers just below that it's a bit hard to see there we go okay this is to prevent close range shots from punishing through your sights so you just set it up so it has to get through this 160 to 350 armor belt the end of warship could be yeah uh, oh it's this one here it has to get through 160 to 350 millimeters of armor this chunky very tough armor belt in order to have any chance of reaching the citadel, which is this thing here. So, it has to pen the citadel as well, as well. So it's going to be tough, very tough to do that. You get pens? Sure you will, you'll pen. Um, like all battleships, the side armour is high like this, it is the sort of battleship grade or cruiser grade armour, but, or even potentially higher. Um, this armour will be penned, it will not be citadel though. Unless you're at longer ranges, when then the shells, if I go through here, just need to pen this upper deck of it. See that? Upper deck is like 50, which is really not that much. It's not that much considering plunging fire, it can punch right through that. So you'd rather go through 50mm plating, or would you rather go through 160 to 350, you know? The difference is there. Plunging, plunging fire is where you get the deal. Regardless though, as you can see, that's where the citadel is. Tough ship citadel, very tough. You're not going to get um, this wee small bit here. This is well under the waterline. Unlikely you're going to get much out of it. You know, so I wouldn't hope for that. You may have noticed this: the plate, uh, the shell deck, sorry, deck armor is 50 to 120, so very resistant to HE. But if this was all you're shooting at, the boat would be really tanky. But there is a special part of the boat. There we go, superstructure. That is 90 millimeters. This part here is what makes the turpits easily killable. You know, this bit here. Without this bit, 
this is a one wonderfully tanky ship. Wonderfully tanky ship. You're gonna you're gonna struggle to do much to the boat if you give a geese an angle, you know? So yeah. Side plating on the superstructure nineteen ninety two. Coin tower doesn't really matter because uh, nothing can ever pay in the coin tower. So yeah, um yeah. That's the turtle back armor scheme. That's how it works. It covers the citadel so it prevents close range citadels. As you can see, if you're shooting it like that, you have to get through that thick plating. And long range you can go through the deck armor and you can avoid that. Or additionally if you're a turpits, you can just punch through the upper hull and then maybe into the citadel. But you do have that 60 armor plate, uh, 60 millimeters armor belt preventing uh, Citadel, even from the front. You're going to struggle, as you can see that. You might get it, but you're still going to struggle. You have to go completely underwater. So yeah, tough, tough boat to Citadel, but it is possible from longer ranges. So yeah, that's the turpits. Um, I'll go into a battle right away again, but this time the boat has torpedoes. And the secondary are much shorter range, seven kilometers instead of eleven point something. Eleven point four. You probably get like eleven point five, eleven point six. My hipper is fully maxed out, within one point to go, so you're probably gonna get fifteen, I believe. Let me just check real quick for you. My goodness, I can't check real quick. Yeah, fifteen, fifteen. Kilometer a percent increase to your secondary, so you're gonna get like 11.7, maybe 12. I do not know. It's only like a percentage higher, so you probably get yeah, probably, probably, probably 12, maybe. That's probably the best range for it. Anyway, without much further ado, I will get into a battle this time with the turpits. So we're on Tears of the Dead here. Uh, domination, no divisions this time. And uh, this is a very, very dumb strategy, I must say, but I thought it'd be funny to feature it and it might be worth uh, illustrating the tankiness and in the hands of a good player, the turpits can perform exceptionally well, more so than an Odin can, because the difference between the Odin and the turpits is not just tankiness, the turpits has more base health, it also has much better torpedo angles and it has harder hitting guns. So. Um, plan for this map, very difficult, but you want to try and get yourself behind some islands. You know, you want to be using cover, particularly in the German boats, as, as uh, I believe Zarkin has said as well. You want to be using cover as much as possible to conceal your ship, well, not much use now, conceal your ship and avoid taking damage. Um, on the future the beginner guide, I will be showing this a bit more and with some illustrations. And I'll do what I can to feature this, but island cover is very useful. You want to be using it whenever possible. So, uh, been spotted, and that is an Iowa boom. Yes, it is. Yeah, so, do your best to angle towards him. At long range, he definitely can fit it, though. So, I don't like this. Um, he's pushed forward, no point running away. If I run away, I'm giving broadside to the Iowa, and he will not probably miss because he's an Iowa. Again, another borderline. Uh, broken boat, borderline. Um, yeah, so Akatsuki spotted. Well, he's the guy that's been spotting me. Do what I can to shoot him. Uh, Turpus, I believe, is much more accurate than the Bismarck, but it's still a German battleship at high tiers, so very low accuracy. I have to turn a little bit more because I suspect torpedoes from the Akatsuki. So turn more. Thankfully, dodging ourselves from the Iowa, I believe. That's always good. Uh, just because you're a battleship doesn't mean you cannot dodge shells. You can obviously try, and it's always worth trying. Now, Fiji, hopefully, has running his, is running his sonar. And if he's not, he should be able to spot the truth anyway, which is nice. So, a bit relieved I can turn a bit more to the left now. Give the DD a bit more broadside, because I will have advanced warning. Meanwhile, um, I pushed a little bit too much, really, to be fair. And Atlanta's saying hi to me, and I don't like that. So I'm going to fire back at him, try and disencourage him from shooting me. I'm not expecting to hit him at this range, nor do I expect to do much damage. We'll see. Always worth shooting at, but the problem is my back guns are not there. This is where the Kedroff inspiration comes right in. I can use that whenever I want. Lock the guns, look around a little bit, and see if I can get a follow-up shot with the Atlanta. Now, this is again German dispersion. Don't expect much until you see the salvo and you're like, oh. 
Very good. I'm happy with that. You know, you've never been disappointed. Two for pens on Atlanta, as expected. Iowa is doing his best to chunk me. Not doing that much. Fortunately, most of the shells are hitting my hull and bouncing or dick. And uh, the shots that are doing damage are on my superstructure. <clears throat> so, angling a little bit to the Bismarck. As you see, this is the sort of angle I want to keep. He wants to shoot my lower hull, my hull, to do damage, but at this angle he thinks he can pen me, but he probably won't. So he's going to struggle to do a massive amount of damage to me immediately, but the problem is, in order to get to him, he is rushing the back of the map. I really despise people who just snipe that way. There's, there's bullets that are designed to snipe, and don't get me wrong, but doing that is just a bad idea. It's just get yourself out of the way. Pushing with your team and hanging back is a completely different strategy entirely though. Broadside hoods, can I punish? No, I'm not really. Two pens, two over pens. Fortunately though, I'm also capping this area. This is a solo cap, there we go. I push the middle of the map. <laughs> so I mean by questionable strategy. Not particularly great, but there's islands concealing both sides here. This map is probably one of the only maps you can certainly push the middle and actually do not that. There we go. Got rewarded at that time with a citadel and two pens on Hood. Hood's probably noticed me by now. If he hasn't, then his head must be ringing from the previous citadel. So he's going to be shooting at me. I would rather get broadside to Hood than uh, Iowa. Hood's pen is not great when it comes to other battleships. When he cruises, that's another citadel by the way. That was beautiful. He hits me, but he doesn't do that much. He does mostly does pens because he can't actually reach my citadel. He has struggle. He will struggle to do much in this range. Not because he has, uh, not because he couldn't. It's because his penetration is British penetration. So this is at a medium range. He's not going to citadel me. Very unlikely. So he's the most. If if you have to get broadside to one boat and you're stuck in a crossfire like this situation here, get broadside to the boat that is the least threat to you. You should see this hood. He's not doing much. He really isn't. He's, yeah, I've got, I can hear most of his back. He's going to struggle to do much. Meanwhile, the Iowa, on the other hand, that was a nasty penetration. I think he went, that was a little bit too much angle, I think. But fortunately, it wasn't enough to absolutely rip my new one. 20 seconds to the heal. Very useful heal pumping up. Hopefully, I can use it. I should be able to use it. Now, I'm going to pump my bow towards the Iowa. He's going to have to hit my superstructure to do any tangible damage. And fortunately I've not been spammed by HD too much, so my torpedoes are still intact. I wanted to get rid of this guy because I just don't like this sort of play and I really want to punish it. That being said, he did smack me quite royally there. Again, this is the superstructure, you went for the superstructure, that's why my gun my gun is damaged, he went right for the superstructure. So pretty darn rough salvo. Gonna fire what I can at the hood because the bat gun is doing the bat gun. By tanking Iowa, that is gonna be a tough target to kill. I assure you, because Iowa is very, very tough. Additionally, this tankiness is one reason why the Iowa should be so far back the way it is. It can tank quite a lot of shells, and it can really do that not bad at all. Hitting mostly my nose and bouncing everything. The one shot went for the superstructure. Secondaries, even though I'm at a really unbad angle for them, I've only set, I don't, I've set them on fire, which is nice. Another secondary hit. <clears throat> Getting as close as possible to make sure my spinners do not miss. He is full health though, so I'm going to do what I can. Switch to HE by the way, you may have noticed that, because a bow tanking IO is going to struggle, I'm going to struggle to do much to him. Set him on fire, that's the perma fire, let it burn a little bit. Tapitos are getting ready, but I don't want to open my angle just yet, because he is bow on to me, so that's a very hard chance for me to actually get hit on him, even in this range. So I believe I switched AP now, yep, there we go. A couple more shots into him. Setting the chance of fires, doing some reliable damage to him. I believe that's the hood. I can't actually see what, what battleship that is, if he's even a battleship. It could something, I don't know what it was. But I think it's done a fair job at uh, doing some damage. My heal is off cooldown. <sighs> Thank god I had that heal. Again, Iowa is a tad broken, but fire what I can. Not a great salvo, but actually, never mind, very good salvo. All four torpedo hits. Now, this is a risky moment here. I got to oh, hold my fire. It's really risky because if he gets a salvo off, that's me dead. There's no way in hell the eye will not do more than 12k to me. So fortunately, I pull it off. 
it was the hood that actually did a fair chunk of damage to me there. They must have had a super, super structure and did a fair chunk. <clears throat> I might have been giving him broadside at a closer range. I wasn't paying too much attention. But fortunately, though, I'm angled, so he's not going to do anything to me. Another Citadel on the poor hood, and hopefully I can finish him off with a salvo. There's German though, so don't expect the world. Oh, I got him this time with one shell, that's nice. Atlanta comes into play. I would really like to hang back a little bit and let my heels do the work, but he's going to keep me spotted. I, he's not going to, he's not going to spot me, and he's going for me pretty darn significantly. So, do I can't fire at him. Uh, again, German dispersion, not great. <clears throat> I really don't like being spammed by HE in the turpits because you can lose your torpedo chips, and that's really your your best gimmick. That and your close range secondaries, which aren't too close range to be comfortable, to be comfortable really. So yeah, being pretty darn hurtful here, hurt here. My heal is off cooldown. Use it, my God, use it. Well, to your build, helpful here because that heal is faster. That way, I can heal more very quickly and will stand a bit better. So yeah, do what I can. Try and get the Atlanta when he's bow on or something like that. But it's difficult to hit the Atlanta when he's by on. So I need to get closer. He has torpedoes as well, and he's taken it one side of my torpedoes already because that's what HE spam does to you. Um, <laughs> damage the other set torpedoes. Not great. But whatever, we'll see. I've got about 7,000 health and I've got 56 seconds to my heal, so I'm going to struggle. If I get set in fire, I'm probably just going to burn to death. And it's to the Lancer. He can fire too many shots for me to really care. Try and get the back guns off before he kills me because he's going to burn me to death here. So, get my can. Full salvo towards him. I didn't get full salvo off. I got him though. That's the main thing. So, yeah. 178,000 damage, a uh, bunch of secondary hits, 3 kills, and a solo cap. If you look at the team score here, we're actually going to win this game. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to capture a screenshot of this, that's why you're watching the same me moment of me sinking again and again. But uh, yeah, I'm going to call this a win here, and funnily enough, a successful middle push. <laughs> so, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.